<laughs> Y'all know what time it is. We gonna ride together, we gonna show up. Black guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Devontae Smith to the far side. Gives it off to Sanders. To the five. In for the touchdown. Goes Miles Sanders. Ten yards out. He is going deep for A.J. Brown, who leaps, comes down with the football, makes a touchdown. He's fine, baby. Let's go. Hey! Back goes Wentz. They've got him again. And that would be sack number nine. That was a cover sack. But now that I got one, I can, I can relax. I can breathe. I can breathe. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Y'all ready for this? He backed up. He sacked back at the 36. Hey, they can't stop us. We got this. The only person can stop us is us. Ask her out. No, no, no. They're going to get another pick, I guess. Mills is back. Here comes the rush. He throws. And it is intercepted. And now you don't take nothing but you being yourself. Let's keep this thing going, man. First, he fires the plate. And it is a touchdown. Clay Watkins. Mom. Hey, hey, hey. We're going to win like the best celebration award, bro. I just black out when I get the ball in my hands. I never know what I'm going to do. Like, sometimes I just backflip over people. Ah! I told you. Prime time play, man. Prime time play in a big time game. Defense, 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 defense. Love. Thank you. Certainly was a fun season, and Jalen Hurts shined brightest on the game's biggest stage last season. In Super Bowl 57, he passed for more than 300 yards and a touchdown, and he added three more scores on the ground. We recently caught up with his teammate, Lane Johnson, at the Senior Bowl Hall of Fame ceremony and asked if we know yet just how good Hurts can be. Yeah, I think we're still understanding. Uh, you just look at the past three years, the evolution of that. Uh, I think that speaks volumes. But really, I just I feel like how he handled himself in college uh, with all the transitions, uh, you know, scrutiny, this, that, and other. But as, uh, you know, just like you said, kept ascending. And uh, doesn't say a whole lot when he does. Usually contains a... You know, a lot of wise words, but uh, yeah, man, really, really impressed with him. You heard Lane Johnson mention the ascension and the evolution there in Jalen Hurts' game. Look at some of the numbers here from his 2021, where he was still a playoff quarterback, to 2022, where he was a Super Bowl quarterback and MVP runner-up. That passer rating, the touchdowns improved, the interceptions were fewer, and his passer rating certainly amongst the best in all the games. So now, as we get used to Lane Johnson referring to Shane Steichen moving on and dealing with some of the adversity that he had in college with those transitions, saying that he can overcome adversity now in the NFL. So as Brian Johnson steps in as the offensive coordinator in Philadelphia, Bucky, do you think that Jalen Hurts can take another step forward or maybe a step back in 2023? Oh, I think he continues to be an ascending player. If you go back and look at Jalen Hurts' history, he's continued to get better and better and better each and every year. Going back to when I first saw him at Elite 11, this guy has completely transformed his game. We talk about Jalen Hurts being a dual threat quarterback. I think if you're the Philadelphia Eagles, you're excited about the player that you saw play in the Super Bowl. The guy who, in essence, outplayed Patrick Mahomes when you look at their individual battle. He's a player who has shown the ability not only to disrupt and impact the game as a runner, but the way that he is able to pick apart defenses as a passer. Now that his old quarterback coach moves into the head chair in terms of the play caller, I think you will see more things from Jalen Hurts. There's a synergy and a connectivity between he and Brian Johnson. I think Brian Johnson continues to find a way to unlock some of those hidden talents that we haven't seen yet from Jalen Hurts.
Yeah, Bucky, if you listen to anybody in Philadelphia, whether it's owner Jeffrey Lurie, general manager Howie Roseman, or head coach Nick Sirianni, all three of them said the same thing after his massive contract extension. None of us, and we don't think anybody does, knows the ceiling for Jalen Hurts. And Nick Sirianni said it's specifically because of four things. It's his love of football, his competitiveness, his work ethic, and his football IQ. That's a big part, as you're mentioning, him becoming a de and developing into a better passer. When I talked to defensive coordinators that went against this Eagles team this past year, three things were told to me repeatedly why this team is so good offensively. One, they just have dudes everywhere. They're just more talented than you everywhere, and all those guys are pretty much coming back. Two, it's the duality of Jalen Hurts. It's not just the arm talent or the running ability. It's that he can do both, and he keeps you on your heels as a defense, which allows him, Omar, to do a lot of things. And the third part was... Shane Steichen as a play caller. The way he called this offense was complemented by a lot of defensive coordinators I talked to around the league that faced the Eagles. Brian Johnson does have an unbelievable relationship with Jalen Hurts, but that is the one change that is happening. We'll see what, you know, BJ does in that seat calling it. If he put this offense together with Shane Steichen and Nick Sirianni a lot, during the week, now he's going to have to shine on Sundays. I remember last year the big storyline about Jalen Hurts was he was having the same offensive coordinator for the first time in back-to-back -back yeah. seasons since he was in high school. He's certainly used to having new offensive coordinators.